All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started. I, I usually like to give people a chance to uh, get on and um, whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Glad to see you guys were able to make it. All right. So in the chat, do me a favor. Please type in, is this your first time? Um, or is this your, you know, is this your first time on uh, one of these basic trainings? Or is this, you know, your first time? Yeah, basically, let's, let me hear that. Is this your first time in this basic training? Okay. And then let me know if there's, if I got any um, repeats. And I don't want to call them repeats. I'm more like, you know, this is your, this is like your second time around, third time around. There ain't nothing wrong with repeats. I love to see repeats because that, a lot of times, the first time, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, I think I get it. But like the second and third and fourth and fifth and, you know, you get it. <laughs> repeat, repeat. That's right. I see you, Gretchen. Yes, you get it. After a while, the, the more, the fourth time, and like you can, you can even hear from the people who've been on here three plus times. They probably can tell you that they are learning something new each time just because there's so much to learn. There's so much. So those of you who are my repeaters, go on and, you know, let them know. Let them know that, you know, it's nothing wrong with repeating. You learn more. Hopefully this is, this is providing value to you um, as a person. See, repeat in all caps. That's what I'm talking about, Ferguson. <laughs> yes, I, like, I love repeats. Okay. Yes, repetition is the mother of learning. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So you guys that are on um, that have joined, I want to just make sure, first of all, that you guys, um, first of all, I appreciate you guys getting on here and, you know, taking out your time. I want you guys to make sure that you are very mindful of your cameras. Make sure that you are the only one that, you know, basically that, you know, you see what you want people to see. Make sure you know what people can see. Because I have, I don't know if anybody's been on any of my trainings, but I have had people say that, you know, they've seen some questionable things. So just make sure you know where your camera is pointing, okay? Make sure anybody around you knows that you have a camera on, <laughs> okay? Because there's been some interesting stuff. All right, so let's make sure that. And then the other thing is please make sure that you mute yourself out towards the end. I will give you an opportunity to unmute yourself, okay? So we're going to go ahead and get started on 4X training. Yes, guys. All right. Um, and if you like, oh, another thing about me is while you guys, while I go through this, I usually keep my chat window open. So please feel free to, um, oh, you've watched. Oh, thank you so much, Tiffany. All right. So yes, please feel free to ask questions at any given time. So keep my chat window open and I'll try to respond to you promptly. Okay. So here we go. So we're going to start off with this video. This video, I think does a great job of explaining 4x for first time second time third time you get it <laughs> so let's go ahead and watch it oh in just a minute uh okay sorry guys if you have ever traveled to a foreign country you may have needed to exchange your money if so you've already participated in forex trading forex well forex is a bit more than that for example Companies buy goods from other countries. In order to buy them, they need to obtain the local currency first, just like us when going on holiday. The difference is they will exchange huge amounts. When these companies exchange these huge amounts, they will actually move the price because the demand for the currency that they need increases. When the demand increases, the price increases. With all this exchanging going on around the world, the exchange rates constantly move. This is how it works. When currencies are exchanged, they have a certain price. The exchange rate, as in any market, the price of a currency is determined by the law of supply and demand. If there are many people or companies that want to change euros into dollars, the price of the dollar will rise against the euro, and so the exchange rate will change. Let's use an everyday example to explain how you can actually profit from this. Say you live in Europe and went on holiday to the United States. Let's say that you changed your 500 euros into US dollars at the rate of $1.4 for every euro. You got 700 US dollars, but you do not spend any money at all. So you still have $700 after you cut back. 
After the exchange rate moved from 1.4 to 1.3, instead of getting just 500 euros back, you actually get 538 and a half euros. You have gained 38 and a half euros simply from holding your money in dollars while the exchange rate changed. This is essentially how we trade in the forex market. We buy a certain amount of a currency, hold on to it whilst the exchange rate moves, then change it back, making money along the way. How to decide when the right time to buy and sell is exactly what we teach you throughout the rest of our learning lessons. As you can imagine, traveling a lot and saving a bit of money on your holiday budget and then exchanging it, it's not really a practical approach to trading currencies. Fortunately, there is an easier way to do this. You can trade currency through online exchange offices called brokers. What this means is that you can exchange currencies online throughout the day and take advantage of the constantly fluctuating exchange rates. Just as in the example of when you went on holiday, you can buy different currencies and make a profit as the exchange rates change. This is trading the Forex market. Trading Forex online with a broker has many benefits. You can trade Forex from your home or anywhere that you have an internet connection. The Forex market never sleeps. It is open 24 hours a day, five days a week, and so can suit your daily routine. You do not need a huge budget to get started. As little as $150 is enough to begin trading and building your account over time. Of course, it will require some learning until you get there, but this is exactly what TraderMo is here for. To help you learn how to trade in a way that can suit your individual lifestyle, and to help you navigate your way through the Forex market. All right. So, okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. I usually like to show that video because I think it does a great job of um, giving you a good overview of what the Forex market is truly. Um, you know, I never really, I don't know about you guys, if, if a lot of you are like me. When I first joined IML, I had no idea the Forex market even existed. I didn't know um anything about a pip i didn't know you know okay i know it sounds ridiculous but you know I, at first i thought they were talking about um hold on a second somebody's drawing on my screen here uh let me clear this up there we go okay yeah i i didn't know what they were talking about i actually when i first came into IML, i jumped on the london sessions and that was my first entrance into these trainings and whatnot and i don't know has anybody been on the london sessions give me like let me know in the chat have you been on the london sessions Anybody been on the London sessions, the New York sessions? Let me know what sessions. The DFW Trade House, Justin Adams. Does anybody know? Let me know. Once on London, New York. What was your thoughts about that? <laughs> yeah, completely like Chinese math. Yes, absolutely. What was your thoughts? Tell me what your thoughts were in the chat. Like, were you, did you feel like, oh, yes, I get this. This is great. Or were you like, what? Huh? What are they talking about? <laughs> which one you know clueless yeah greek to me you know what guys i thought i walked into a geometry class or something i don't know some kind of geometry statistics class something something like if geometry and statistics got married that would be 4x that's what i thought i walked into all right um yeah it's okay though all right i actually stayed on those london sessions way before we had the basics i stayed on those london sessions for like eight weeks straight and I will tell you, <laughs> I will tell you guys, uh, that was like the biggest, that was the biggest asset for me, okay? I really loved it. With Chris Derrick, he did an amazing job training. Um, and now they've brought the New York sessions and they, like those sessions are super, they're very advanced. But I will say um, there, there's something for you to definitely aspire to eventually. So if you are on those sessions, you're like, I don't know about that. Just give it more time. Just like I have a lot of people on here repeating. I'm telling you guys, I was on the London sessions for eight weeks. Solid. Okay. And then I move on. After a while, you start knowing what the teacher's going to say, what they're thinking. That's a good sign, guys. I, I started to, you know, move around to different little um, areas just because after a while, I started to know what Chris Derrick was going to say. Because when you, some of you guys know what I'm going to say because you've been on my, on my training so much. <laughs> That's a great sign. Okay. So let's talk about Forex. First of all, it is a $5.3 trillion a day industry. Okay. 
unlock the New York Stock, Stock Exchange, which is $22.4 billion a day. That's still very impressive, but let me tell you, $5.3 trillion? Oh my gosh. That means everybody has an opportunity to get a piece of this pie, all right? As long as you are utilizing good risk management, which I'll talk about good risk management in the later session, okay? So currency pairs, buying and selling, all right? This is something that you need to know. Like when I was on the New York session, it's interesting because they were talking about, yeah, I'm gonna go long, I'm gonna go short. Like there's lots of terminology that, oh, oh, okay, sorry for drawing. Oh, so you do know, okay, see, you know what? I didn't know that you guys could do that, but yes, thank you, Emmanuel. <laughs> Anyhow, okay, as far as the drawing. Yes, people were on the, the uh, sessions and they're like, what is this long you're talking about? What, what do you mean you're going short? We're taking a long position, what does that mean? Okay, so that's what we'll be talking about, along with what pits are, um, how you buy and sell, what does a buy and a sell look like, why buy, why sell, okay? So let's talk about it. Before you can even talk about buying and selling, you got to know about what you're buying and selling, and those are the currency pairs, like the video talked about. When you go to another country, you will see different currency pairs in different countries, excuse me, different currencies in different countries. You leave the U.S., you go to Mexico, you're exchanging your dollar for the peso and vice versa. Should anything happen in the economy where that currency's value goes down or up, you can either make money or lose money, okay, depending on what side you're on. So in this Forex market, a lot of people are surprised to see that you actually can make money if the market is going up or down. Depends on the side that you're on. All right, a lot of people get surprised about that. So hey, there's a lot of there's a lot of different ways that you can get paid. All right, so what are these currency pairs? There's the majors, the minors, and the exotics. Let me go into those real quick. The major currency pairs are anything that has the U.S. dollar. All right, it has the U.S. dollar. It is considered major. Why? Because everywhere, all around the world, everybody wants their hands on the dollar. You've heard of the the phrase "cash is king," uh, "king dollar." whatever the case may be for however long that is, um, the US dollar is the world reserve currency. Therefore, it is the major currency pair. Every country would likes to trade with the major currency. And the reason why is, is because it is the most liquid. And when I say liquid, I am referring to it is the easiest um, to, to get. Think about it, you guys are actually trading. So that means when you are involved in the trade, there is somebody who is doing the giving and someone doing the taking, right? And depending on, on either side, there's a giver and a taker on both sides. You give, I get, and then on the other side, I give, you get, okay? So that is an actual trade. So the reason why people like the majors is because everybody wants it. Who wants to trade some? Come on now. If you can think back to your siblings, you know, I hated it. I was the middle child for, for a while. I was the youngest child until my brother came and stole my birthday. We have the same birthday. Anyhow, uh, that's, another, that's another story for my therapist. But okay, think back to your childhood when you guys were getting stuff. It was always the oldest child that got to get something, right? And they always gave you the little crappy piece. You know what I mean? If you had food, they would always take first and give you, you know, if it was bread, they gave you the, the butt end of the bread, you know. You, I don't know if any of you guys are the youngest or the middle child. Shout out to my middle children out there. Um, but you understand what it is to not want a trade, a bad trade, okay? Like, you want an even trade. The majors are an even trade. Everybody wants them, okay? I don't know why I went off on a tangent talking about, you know, middle children. Anyhow, then there is the crosses, all right, the cross currency pairs, they are any pair that does not contain the US dollar, all right? So that would be the euro, it would be the yen, uh, it would be the pound, the GBP. So here are some of them in here. And these right here, these are just like different, you know, terminologies, we, we're nerds in here. So these are just terminologies that we all talk about, like the Kiwi, yen, okay? So that's the New Zealand dollar and the Japanese um, yen. So some people actually say that in the telegrams, they say that on the London sessions, they're talking about Swissy in. If you don't know, now you know. Okay, so that's good. You can um, raise your, oh, I see that. You can actually write some of these down. And then again, you don't actually have to because these are so readily available online. All right. So if you want to know all the different pairs, there's like 27 different pairs. You can always look them up, research them. One thing about people is they get in and they go nuts trying to trade all 27. And then you've got then you've got the futures, and then you've got all the different, you know, there's so many different things that you can trade. Gold, silver, oil, 
what I would say to people who are brand new is to pick a few. Pick a few that you like and study them. Those of you who are here to learn to trade, pick a few and then expand your portfolio, okay? Don't buy it off more than you can chew. All right, the last ones is the exotic currency pairs. Uh, these ones are not as liquid. Uh, this is, I don't want to refer to this as kind of like that, you know, that end of the bread type of situation. This is the one where not as many people are willing to take them because the economies are not as established. All right. So it's not as easy to find someone who is willing to take that one, uh, that trade when there's like the crosses, the cross currency pairs, like I said, are like the Euro, the yen and the pound. Those ones are also very highly liquid. Uh, of course, USD is very, um, very highly liquid. So it says, uh, would you say to focus on just a few pair? Yes, I would say focus on a few. Okay, focus on, now I will say this, and this is my personal thoughts, and this is also just kind of well known. The Euro USD is pretty much probably the highest traded currency pair. Um, I like the Euro, Euro USD, obviously. I like the USD JPY. These are just ones that I like. Uh, I like GBP JPY, although that one can move really crazy. I like the New Zealand dollar. I like, you know, I like a lot of these. I love a lot of the yen pairs. I love the, you know, yeah, those were the ones. Your, this one, USD JPY, is my, this one's my baby right here. All right, anyhow, um, that, that's just me. Now, some people, some people, you know, everybody's going to do what they want to do. Um, and I'm just saying, pick a few. The reason why, let me talk to you about this real quick. The reason why I just say to pick a few is because over time, those of you who want to be traders, like you, you joined the company, one, because the compensation package was great, but on the slide, you're also trying to be a student, okay? Um, pick a few because each pair kind of does something different. They kind of have a different dance, you know what I mean? It's like chicken and beef. They are totally different textures, completely different animals. They're not the same. Just because they're all animals doesn't mean they all taste the same, look the same. You get it. And it's the same with currency pairs. You want to make sure that you, you figure it out. Like, look at how this one moves. Some of them move crazy, like gold. Some of, And the GBP, JPY, they just have crazy moves. Some of them are a lot more chill and mellow, like New Zealand dollar. After a while, you will start to figure it out, not necessarily figure out the market, but you will figure out a flow in the market, okay? So make sure that you check that out. All right, so yes, this is, will we be able to get the recording of this training? This is my first time. Yeah, I'm glad you're loving it. And yes, you will. It will probably take maybe a day or so, and then I'll put it in the Telegram chats just because it can take a while to load up. All right, so it says, would you say to focus on a few pair and only trade those that you, that you focus on, ignore the signals? Um, now, here's the thing. You can, I would say, as a student, make the pairs that you choose to focus on your study. You know, make that your study. I'm not saying don't take any trades from like the swipe trade because that thing is on fire or the harmonic scanner. I'm saying that's also a tool. Like that's a tool. It's a great marketing tool. And on top of that, you can catch some nice major pips. Okay. So I would definitely say, you know, when you decide to start trading on your own, making your own charts, you want to start studying those pairs, okay? Because the harmonic scanner swipe trades, they do all the hard work for you, okay? So that's what I would say in regards to that, all right? Um, and uh, there's one more thing. I just, you know, here's one more tangent. I just feel the need to say this to everybody who is on here, okay? I need you guys to hear me clearly, all right? You need to repeat to yourself, wherever you are, repeat this to yourself. I, go on and say it. I, you can say it out loud, am a student. I am a student. Repeat that to yourself, okay? If there's someone sitting next to you, repeat it to them. Hey, you over there, I am a student. Get in the bed. That's what I would say to my kids. Anyhow, I am a student. The reason why I want you to say that is because I get so many people who feel the need to have their own little testimony first before they go out there and tell people. Or they get hounded by people when they're trying to tell them about the product. Well, that's good and nice, but are you making any money? Okay, time out. When, when you're in school, like as a pre-med student, do we hound the pre-med student and say, hey, that's fine and dandy that you're in college to become a doctor and all, but are you making some money yet? Like, that doesn't make sense. The whole reason you joined 
was one, compensation package was great. Two, to learn for X, okay? Say that. I am a student. I am a student. I am here to learn a skill. So if you are not just ready to buy a Porsche by the end of the month or even by the end of the year, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I know I went to school. I went to college. Took me four years. And even still, you know, I became a teacher. I still couldn't buy a Porsche. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, you are in college, the college of IML, to learn Forex. You have trainers that are available to you, your professors. You have all of that, okay? So make sure you remember that. When somebody's like, well, have you made any money? No, but you know what I have made? I have learned something about this forex that's going to teach me a school uh, that's going to teach me a skill that will pay me forever okay so there you have it that's that's all i have to say about that i just want you to repeat that to yourself if you get crossed by somebody make sure you let them know exactly it bothered me i am a student i can't can i opt out of student loans you can opt out of student loans go and get your two and then you're free on top of that, get 12 and they pay you $600. I went to college. I told people what college I went to and I never got a referral bonus at all. <laughs> so I'm just saying. All right. So anyhow, I'm done with all of that. Uh, Forex trading session. All right. There are four different trading sessions. Um, yeah, that's you begin losing it every time. Let me just say, I'm sorry. I keep doing this. I wanted to mention that to you guys because I know people was bothered by that. And what I just need you to know, like, you got to learn how you have to start the conversation from the student perspective. Don't paint the picture like they're going to, you know, win the Porsche or get hit the jackpot. If it was that easy, everybody would be doing it. Okay. I'm glad that that was helpful. You are a student and you know what? You also have to approach them like, Hey, if you don't want this, I feel bad for you. Cause I'm learning this skill. I'm learning a skill. I paid 195 to learn the skill. You know what I paid for college? Ah. Ooh, yeah, let's, you know, <laughs> I, you know what? My college was about 18,000 per semester. It was a private, private school. Anyhow, so let's, let's just say that. Moving on, Drake University. Look at that. They're still not paying me for it. All right, Forex trading sessions. There are four Forex trading sessions. There's the London, the New York, the Sydney, and the Tokyo. The thing that you need to, peek, uh, to, take, um, to check out is these overlaps. This right here. Oh yeah, that's like my favorite time, guys. I'm glad that really helps. Let just take that monkey off your back, guys. All right, this this little overlap here is my favorite. Everybody's got different favorites, different sessions that they like to trade. Some people love the Tokyo sessions. Those of you who like the Tokyo, that means you're you're loving to stay up. You know, it kind of starts in the nighttime uh, for our Central and Eastern time folks. Um, the London session is oh yeah. Those of you who like to take trades off the harmonic scanner, especially USD pairs uh, and GBP pairs, those are many times I've put trades in at around 10 o'clock my time, woke up. Man, I love waking up at 3 and 4 o'clock for the most part and seeing the bluebirds chirping, okay? Nothing like waking up in profit. Um, it says, would you say that more signals are called during the overlap session? I would say that um, specifically because you'll see this. Like, this is kind of like, for those of you who are in Eastern and Central time, this is kind of during the time where you're getting ready for work and you're going to work and around lunchtime it slows down. But you will see more trades called because the market is so much more liquid which means you've got you've got two different um, sides of the globe open at the same time you got the london session you got the new york session two big um superpowers open at the same time and that's kind of like the equivalent of going to like the mall of america to you know sell a purse versus going out to the cornfield to sell a purse like it's gonna be really hard for you to sell one way out there in the cornfield versus if you went to like a major major mall like this right here I don't know what it's like in other countries. You got a place where it is ridiculous. Like there's constantly people trading. This is like that right here. This overlap just because there's so much more people. That's why, you know, in, in, in lots of touristy places, why do you think there's so many stores? Because there's a lot of tourists, which means it's going to be easy to sell and trade stuff. It's the same during this overlap. Okay. You know, the London session by itself is nice, but when you got an overlap, that's like having the regular people and the tourist people out and ready to shop. Okay. So that's why people like the overlaps. You've got the Sydney and the Tokyo overlap here. So if you want some good trading, 
it's those overlaps. So this right here, Forex market hours, you can look it up and find out what the times are for you because this right here is geared towards the Eastern time folks. All right. So if you want to see it readjusted for you, just go there. Okay. So that's, that's when it all, like if you're in Eastern and central, you can feel free to screenshot this if you like. All right. There is also two types of trading sessions. There is the winter and the summer right now. This time is adjusted for the winter times, the winter session. And then it will readjust for the summer session, okay? Um, the times are different because of daylight savings and whatnot. People's work hours are different in the banks. A lot of them like to go on break on their nice fancy yachts. Isn't that nice? One day. Okay, so there you have it. Um, these are different days that, you know, pairs move. So I talked about the Euro USD right over here, okay? Or excuse me, these currency pairs right here. You will start to see that some pairs have crazy movements and some of them are a little chill, you know? And some people like, you can still eat good on these little chill um, currency pairs. And sometimes they're nice for you to just dip your toe in. You know, if you've ever been swimming, some of y'all are the toe dippers where you just can't like to, you know, take your little toe and stick it in the water, you know, just to gauge how cold the water is and get used to it. And then some people are like the people that are like jumping straight into the water. And I would say GBP, JPY is jumping straight into the water. You can tell by the amount of pips being moved. And that can be for your benefit or to your destruction. Let me just say, yes, because that thing moves so much doesn't necessarily mean like, if you don't know what you're doing, you can get chopped up pretty quick, like jumping in the ocean and you can't swim. Okay. Um, so make sure. And that's why we're all here, right? Y'all. Cause I am a student. That's why we're all here. All right. Okay. So how to trade Forex buying versus selling. All right, so buying, basically you are buying a currency pair because you are thinking that, hey, this currency, the, the economy for that particular currency is doing well. I believe the value is going to increase. That's right. <laughs> I believe the value is gonna increase, so I'm gonna go ahead and buy that currency. Notice right here, when you see a currency pair, kind of like I showed you guys here, see that? You usually see USD with a slash and CAD. So. The pair that is on the left, and you might write this down. Um, yes, I can show that pip chart again. The pair that is on the left is called the base currency. All right. The pair that's on the right is the quote currency. So the pair on the left is usually the pair that is driving the, you know, the movement. It usually drives it. So if you're saying, hey, I'm going to do a buy on this currency pair. What you're saying is, I want to buy New Zealand and I want to get rid of the USD. That's basically what that means. All right. So base and quote. So if it's on the left, let's say that I'm like, huh, I think that the euro is doing great. I want to buy it. So you buy this. If you're buying that, well, then you mean that means you have to sell this, right? Yeah. You can't buy both of them. You got to buy one and get rid of the other. That's the trading part. Okay. Um, on the flip side, if you say, ha, I want to go ahead and put a sell in on this. I'm selling this year, this pair here. Okay. What you're saying is, uh Oh, somebody's drawing again. What you're saying is, um, I want to sell this currency pair and I want to buy this one. I'm selling this I'm getting rid of it. And I'm buying this. Why would you sell or buy? You are buying something because you feel that the value is going to go up, right? Buy uh, high, wait, was it buy low, sell high? So you want to buy it because we're all cheap skates, right? Hopefully, we're all a little bit frugal. Uh, we don't want to buy something at top dollar. <laughs> Natasha said, Yep, we don't want to buy buy something at top dollar. Uh uh, I'm too cheap for that, guys. We buy it at the lowest price, and then what do we do if you're really a hustler? You sell it, you sell it when it gets high. That's what we're doing, all right? So when you look at these markets, you are trying to see, okay, when is the market going to be low? When is it going to be high? Okay, and, and like with these amazing skills, you're going to get to learn how um, to figure that out to some degree. Because when we first get started, we are all, let's be honest, we're all gambling, all right? But once you start to learn the skill, you will start to have more of a science to it. That's kind of why I call myself trade science because I do believe that trading is an art, but it's very much a science. All right. What are you doing? You're, you're making an educated guess. How is your guess educated? Because you are figuring it out based on plenty of analysis. Okay. 
when we first get started, I mean, when I first got started, I just kind of went off my feelings. Oh man, I just feel it. I don't really know what it is, gambling. I just feel like it's about to go down. I don't know why, but I just, I just feel like it. You know what, uh, that really wasn't good for me. I don't know if anybody out here is anything like me. I am directionally challenged. I have a hard time following directions. Um, you know, it is a science. I have a hard time following actual GPS directions. I've lived in the same city for, I don't even know, 15 years. And guys, I still use my GPS. I'm, I'm sorry, I have to admit it. So I don't know what I was thinking you know, thinking that I could just feel like uh, the market's going to go down. I don't know why, you know. Okay, so moving on. When you see here, this is a sell point. Why is this a sell point? Because this is the highest point that the market reached before is a good time to sell it off, all right? And this is a buy point. This is because this is a lowest point, and then the market started to go up. So what's actually happening here? right let's think back to when we used to sell things like anybody all around the world everybody's had their little thing that they collected and whatnot i know for us it was like baseball cards or it was um it was you know what are those things uh stamps uh it was anything like that comic books okay so back in those days what did we do we tried to buy them when they were cheap when they were low all those great superman batman anything original comics we bought them when they were like 15 cents 25 cents can you even believe that they are that cheap at one point and then what ends up happening oh look at that as people start to see that oh look those there's a lot of value those things are going to go up you should buy them and hold on to them you know whatever the value goes up the more people start to see value they start buying as they are buying they're pushing the value up so these right here this this little all these numbers are called pips and this is really people jumping in like these this this market is reflecting it is putting real-time data of people doing buys or sells as they place buys the market goes up the value goes up think about the comic books as you start buying it more people buy it he buys it she buys it now the value is high everybody wants it everybody wants a piece of it right okay so now if you're on the flip side of this trade what's the best thing for you to do when it gets to this high point sell it why? Because people want the high. They want it. It's hot. It's got great value. Okay. They want what's hot. So that's what's happening there. Okay. Same thing. Now, when people start selling, let's say we start selling it off, just selling. Everybody's just selling it. All right. The value goes down. All right. Value goes way down. The more the market gets flooded with it, the value goes down. All right. If I know that, you know, this comic book is like, you know, the only one of three in the entire world, the, the value is going to be crazy high. But if I know that there's probably about 80 million of them in the market, and the thing, the value's gone, y'all. The value's gone, okay? So that's what's actually happening. The market is recording people um, making transactions. That's what these little things are, are doing right here, okay? So that's, that's good. I'm glad that was helpful for you guys. Also, feel free to ask questions. So now, there's actually, there's actually a science to this called technical analysis, all right? Uh, Chris Derrick and the New York Session, you got Jay Pips and Lex Waves. They, oh, Justin Adams, Christopher Terry, shoot, they all use technical analysis, all right? Chris Derrick gets you right on the an IML Academy. Um, and he talks about support and resistance lines and whatnot. I totally urge you guys, if you have not gone through it, at least go through the um, basics, intermediate one and intermediate two. Those will be very helpful to you before you get on the London session again. So it says, can you switch to a sell? Can you switch, um, sorry, can you switch your sell to a buy? Not while you're actively in it. No, you would have to close it out and then, you know, get into the opposite one. And I'm glad that you're feeling like you understand this, okay? So right here, notice how the market like this right here is considered a ranging market, which means it's moving sideways, sideways in that it's not going up, up and away. It's actually moving up and down and up and down and up and down. And if you were to like zoom out from far, far away, it would actually just look like it's going sideways. Now, if you look here, if you were to try to take advantage of this and trade this market, you can actually see like, all right, the market got up here. And then people felt like at this value, it was time to sell. So when, they, when it got that low, people felt like it was time to buy. 
So now, oh, look at that. It got back up here again, the same, around the same area. And what happened over here last time? People sold. So what ends up happening now? People sell. Same thing. When it came all the way down here, what ended up happening? People bought. They started to buy. So now, eventually, people will get to a point where they start watching certain places in the market. Like, that was a, a huge selling area. And this is a huge buying area. So people start watching. All right, as market moves in here, boom, look at that. It's a sell. I'm selling it. I'm going to sell. I mean, you're making an educated guess, guys, truly. Nobody knows. No one has a crystal ball. But there's so many different things that you can actually do that I have learned through IML that will help you make this, um, make this, make a higher probability trade. You want to take high probability trades, okay? And that's one thing about Swipe Trades is he does a great job of, I mean, if you get on just now, that's why I stopped doing mine on Tuesday so you guys can see how he makes his analysis. If you watch him, he has plenty, you don't got to understand it right away, but he has plenty of technical analysis to back up why he's calling trades. All right, let me take some moments to just show you this. You see these long wicks right here? Those are really good. Um, those are called wicks. And this, this black thing or that white thing is called the body. I'm so glad this is very clear. All right, this is called the body of the candle. These are, I'm sorry, called candlesticks. All these little things, these little lines, you know, remember I called them jiggy jaggies when I first came here. These jiggy jaggies are also called candlesticks. All right, that's the better um, name for them. And these little skinny lines are called the wicks, all right? So basically what it means is like, it tells you, one of these candles tells you a story. One, it's gonna tell you the lowest point it's ever been, which is like right here, the highest point it's ever been, where it opened and where it closed. So that's basically what this whole thing, tells you four things. If you've ever looked, and now let me just take a little pause just to show you this. Let me take a pause. Um, I'm going to go to trading view. This is something that I look at a lot. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Business tools. Uh, all right, so trading view. I love trading view. FYI, trading view is, is amazing. All right, uh, and this is kind of like MetaTrader 4, but you can do a lot of drawings. It's, I mean, you can do a lot on MetaTrader 4 too. So let me go Euro USD. I'm just typing one in. Okay showing you guys these candles because it's important for you to know about these candles why because it's what we're all here for we're trading these candles okay so check these candles out mine are pretty colored you know that's one thing i like about you know i just i made mine this color so the blue represents they're going up the the um purple means they're going down blue or any candles that are going up are called bulls okay any candles going down are called bears so the bears are going down, bulls going up, all right? Bear down, bulls swing up, all right? So that's something to write down if you're new and you forgot that bullish candle or it's a bullish market. If somebody says it's a bullish market, then that means overall that market was moving up, overall. If they said it's a bearish market, overall that market was moving. You might have had ups and downs and all arounds, but overall is moving down, all right? So that's what they're referring to. So now, I talked about these little long wicks, okay? Um, and I won't go into crazy detail on this right now just because I want to make sure I keep it simple and basic. That's the basics of the basic trading, right? So see this candle right here? This is a good one. Um, see this long wick right here? Let me use this purple one instead. Uh, let me find, okay, here's a purple one. All right, see these little teeny weeny words right up here? See them little words? It says O-H-L-C. Open, high, low, close. Let me try to get closer because I, I understand what it's like to not be able to see that well. See that O-H-L-C, open, high, low, close. That's what that means, okay? So these candles here, it's going to tell you the lowest point. So that L right there is talking about the lowest place that this candle ever was, which is going to show with those wicks. The high is going to tell you the highest the market ever like was, Okay. And then the open is going to, it's different depending on the candle. If it's a, if it's a bullish candle, it's going to open in a different place. And I urge you to look that up. It'll tell you about it. Because if I tell you, you might forget. But right here, this is where it opened. And this is where it closed. All right. Typically, bullish candles are always going to close above because they are always moving up. Right. And bearish candles are going to close below. So this right here is where, let me find the easier one. This is where this one opened and it closed, right? Because it's always moving down. Bear candles will always close downwards, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. 
But I will say this. When you see long wicks like that, those long wicks are a good indication that the market is ready to do some moving in a different direction, all right? That, that is one thing that you can use um, along with many other things in technical analysis. That's a little technical analysis for you. That's one thing that you can use to help you figure out, okay, is this gonna be going down, up, down? But notice here, see these long wicks? Woo! Like after a while, the market, this is called exhaustion. When they say wicks or you see long wicks, that means exhaustion. That means the, the, the market was trying to move up here, but it just couldn't do it. So what did they do? They sold it. Same here. The market was trying to go down and make lower lows, but it just couldn't happen. So what happened? It went up. Okay. So that's basically some things. All right. That's, that won't always occur, but a lot of times when you see big, long, long candles like that, good indicator that the market's going to move. All right. So going long and going short. Going long means I'm putting in a buy. Going short means I am selling. I'm going to go ahead and place a sell. Okay. So that's basically what that meant, all right? I'm so glad that this is helpful to you. All right, so pips. Let's talk about these pips because this is why we're here. These pips, guys, this is what makes me excited when I wake up in the morning and I see blue is the pips. So the pips is the fourth decimal place, all right? It's the place that is all the way, this was a decimal, like a period. I don't know why it's a comma, but it's the fourth digit. We're gonna actually calculate those. I'm gonna help you guys Learn how to calculate them yourself because it can be confusing and guys, you can lose unnecessarily because you're not calculating them correctly. All right, so what are pips? They are the unit of measurement. When I showed you that one chart, uh, let me see if I can go back to it real quick. Uh, when I showed you that one chart, these little numbers on the side, those are how we calculate. That's like, you know, it's like a graph. That's how, you know, you're reading. You can look here and see that it was at 1.345, you know, in the market at one point. However much, like from this point to that point, that's how many pips that the market moved, okay? So this would have been an 80 pip profit, that would have been a 160 pip profit if you were on the right side of the sell, that is, or buy. All right, so now let's get back to it. So let's start calculating these bad boys. Before we do that, I have to talk about these doggone numbers called the pipette, all right? The pipette is a fifth digit that for some reason um, the brokers decided to throw on, I think, to trip you up personally. Um, because too many of us, including myself, have calculated these numbers and got overly excited thinking that, oh yeah, I just got 200 pips. Well, no, actually you got 20, all right? So you wanna make sure that you know, like this fifth digit, like it's gonna be represented like this, 0.0001. Ignore that one. Like it is the fourth digit that you want to look at. When it's like, if you see, if you see five, you really only need to see four. Act like, remember, take it back to when you were kids. Invisible. All right. I don't know if you did that to your sibling. You act like they were invisible. I was the middle child. They used to do that to me. I hated it. But anyhow, act like it's invisible. There are also exceptions to the rule before we start calculating. Um, the second digit, there are some pairs that don't have a fourth digit. They only go to the second digit and that would be the yen and gold. They have two or a lot of times they're going to be represented as three, all right? So in that situation, the third digit is going to be the pipette. That would be the one that you ignore, all right? I think I have a nice, this little visual here. Make sure you screenshot this, this is helpful. All right, ignore the pipette. Only look at the pips. So like this, when you see 1.25418, you don't see the eight, you see 1.2541. When you put it in your calculator, that's all you're putting in, 1.2541. Ignore the eight, it's just, it's too much. All right, how do we screenshot? I'm on a Mac. If you hold down the command shift and a three, I got a Mac too. All right, so if you hold down command shift three, I believe you should be able, you'll hear a little, you know, camera sound. Try that out. Okay, so screenshot this little picture. This thing is helpful for you and make sure you tell other people about this. Ignore the pipette, okay? I'm gonna move on. Is it cool? Everybody clear for me to move on if you're screenshotting this or drawing it down really quick? Either one. All clear? Give me the all clear. Okay, good. All right, so calculating pips. You enter New Zealand dollar on a cell. 4.56567 and exit at 4.56776. What is the pips you gained or lost, okay? So now, 
I want you guys right now in the chat. It's time to get live here. I want you guys in the chat. Tell me, did you gain or did you lose? Did you gain or lose? Tell me what you did. Did you gain or did you lose? Notice it says you entered on a cell. I'm not asking you how much yet. I want you to tell me. If you entered on a cell, remember what does a cell look like in the market? Look at these numbers, all right? If you entered here and exited there on a cell, remember on a cell, we're expecting the market to go down, right? Okay, um, so did the market go down? 0.56567, but it went up to 0.56776. So the market went up and not down, all right? On a cell, you want it to go down. So you lost. That sucks. Wah, wah, wah. It's all a part of the game, guys. You got to learn how to take a loss like a champ, all right? And I'll teach you that. You, yes, it's okay. We all lose. It's going to happen. So be ready for it because we are students, right? We're students. <laughs> Anyhow, so um, yes, you lost. It's fine. Now, how much did you lose? <laughs> teach me. I'll teach you. All right. How much did you lose? So what you do, guys, is in your calculator, you type in this one. <laughs> That's right. I am a student. You type in this number, subtracting from that number. All right. And then you will see this. Take that minus that. And you should end up with a equals 0.200 or 209. All right. I see y'all rounding up. Okay. Good job. Um, now, how do you look at that? You can do fancy math called division or you can do what I call slide the decimal over four places. Why are we sliding it over four places? Uh, because they're, you know, oh, I can tell you why. Because remember, the pip is in the fourth digit. That's why we slide it over four places. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Move it over four places. Okay, that's the best I got. All right, so yes, you lost 20.9 pips. All right, we're going to do another one. I like to do multiple ones. Repetition, y'all. So you enter Euro GBP on a buy at 0.85646 and exit at 0.86549. What is the pips that you gained or lost? Did you gain? Yes, I am a teacher. <laughs> Taught for nine years, actually. Um, high school. So, Yes, what is the pips that you gained or lost? Please let me know. Did you gain or did you lose? Look at the numbers. Remember, this is a buy. What do you expect? And yes, Junior, I, um, what is that? I, yes, I've taught for nine years. Can you imagine? I'm a science teacher too. Huh, imagine that. <laughs> so yes. All right. I see you guys. So when you're getting ahead, I see gains. I see gains. That's what I see for all of you. Gains, gaining knowledge. Yes, you got it. All right. You got it. So you take this number minus that number and you should get a number that looks like this. Remember, you place the buy. So you're expecting the numbers to go up. Oh, what's happening there? You are expecting the numbers to go up and they did. Like you should be able to look at that and just recognize that immediately. Okay. Get out of here. Um, so good job. So let's see what, when you take this number and swipe it over to the right four places, you end up with 90.3 pips. Are we feeling that? Are y'all getting that? Does that make sense to you? Type in the chat. Let me know. Yes, I get it. Or uh, -uh I'm still confused. <laughs> let me know. Let me know. Yes, yes, yes. Or no, no, no. <laughs> it's okay either way. Okay, good. I love honesty. It's okay. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're, we're going to do more. That's why I asked that. So some of you are getting it. Yes, finally getting it. Getting it a little bit. Not at all. All right, and that's good. Yes, I really am a student. Absolutely, we are. And here's the thing. If you are confused, that is actually a good sign. A lot of students do not want to understand that confusion is actually a big part of your learning. It's a huge part of your learning. Why? It's because you have this really awesome thing called your brain that is trying to figure it out. And in the meantime, you're kind of on the hold music. You know, when you call places and they put you on hold, that's what your brain is doing. It's got you on hold right now while it figures it out. But I guarantee you, you get on this thing another time and you will see it'll start to click. So those of you who are my repeats, I know you guys feel me on this. It's starting to click for you. And it, it's like, oh, yes, Eureka, I got it, okay? And that's because right now, some of you who are confused, really, you're just on hold, okay? All right, so 
Anyhow, let's move on to another one. And it's okay if you're confused because we're going to talk about it. Now it says, so when we sell, we want the numbers to go, no, no. We want them numbers to go down. Remember? So like right here, here's a good example. Here's a visual of what it looks like when you would want to sell. So right here, this is like, okay, let's say I'm in the market and I use my analysis or the scanner called it or swipe trades, whatever. Okay. I'm in the market and I look and I see, ha, huh, this is a good time to put a sell in the market. I think is going to go down based on all of my whatever I've done to make this guesstimation is going down. So remember a sell, you want it to go down. You're selling it, right? Cause remember you are selling it while it's high because as you sell it, the value goes down, which means the numbers are going to go down. Okay. See those numbers going down. I'm so glad this is a blessing. See the numbers are going down. It's because the value is going down. So if you got in here and you put a sell in yay for you, especially if you got in like here, woo, yay for you. Okay. So let's say you entered here at 1.4500 and you exited at 1.4245. Tell me, what did you gain or lose? What did you gain or, and what did you lose? Type it in the chat. Remember a sell. You see the numbers. I get you somewhat started. Those of you who are like, I'm still confused. Remember, you always take what you started with and then you subtract it from what you are ending with. In other words, what you exited with. So you take the 1.4500 minus 1.4245, right? And then you should get a number that looks kind of like this. Something like that. That's what you should have got. Okay, 0 0.0255, right? And then when you slide this decimal over, how many places? Right, one, two, three, four, bam. Then that's what you get. Remember you slide over four places, why? Because a pip is always in the fourth digit unless you're using the, the yen or gold. All right, does that make sense? So you definitely get gained because it was a sell and it went down. All right, and you gained 255 pips. So yay, that would have been a phenomenal, phenomenal day. I could have been done for the week, honestly. All right, I could have been done for the week. All right, so um, let's go on to another one. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's try another one. All right, so let's do this one, guys. It says 103.75, you entered at that 103.75, okay? And you exited at, oh. That's, okay, hold on a second. And then you exit right here at 101.50, right there. What is, the, how much pips did you gain? You know you gained, because remember, this was a sell. What did you gain? Tell me the pips that you gained. Look at, look at y'all doing so good. You entered here, boink, and you exited there by these little arrows. What did you gain? Let me help some of you guys who need some help getting started. Take the 103.75, right, where you entered, and you subtract the 101.50, right? All right. And then you should end up with a number that looks kind of like this, 2.25. That's what you should have got in your calculator, 2.25, right? That you got something kind of like that. Okay, so now, Tiffany, you are really close. I see that you slid the decimal over four places. Remember, this is an exception to the rule. This is a yin pair, which means you are only, remember the pip for yins and gold are always two digits. So you almost had that, right? You would just need to slide the decimal over two places, only because this is a yin pair. How do you know when you do that? You just look at the, the you can see that, okay, this one's got two pair. So yes, good, you got it. All right, so does that make sense, guys? Are you understanding that whole idea of sliding the decimal over, you know, and then also figuring it out? Now, if you were doing a buy, it would be totally different. You would, like, you would still do the same thing. But if I placed a buy here, and then I ended up, I entered there, and I got out there, it's going to be the same thing. You just figure it out. Did I gain or did I lose? Yes, I'm glad it's coming together. We got a little more. Trust me, we got a little more. Okay, so let me clear my sheet, clear all my drives. Okay, that was supposed to go too. 
All right, let me get that off the screen. Okay, on to the next one. All right, so now we've talked about how you calculate pips. Now let's talk about stop losses. Woo -wee. All right, I'm gonna tell you now, you absolutely need to be trading with a stop loss. Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, got to trade with stop losses. If you don't, you are truly gambling and it is kind of reckless because the market can move very fast, all right? There has been times I've been in a trade and I'm like, oh, look at that, I'm in profit, yeah! And then what happens? I sneeze and the market is like screaming red, <laughs> okay? Like, if you didn't have a stop loss, it's, you're not going to wake up very happy, especially if you went to sleep while using a trade. <laughs> All right? So make sure you use stop losses. They are your safety net. Says, do you set stop losses with the mirror trading? Is that set up differently? Uh, <clears throat> that is set up differently. You want to make sure that you're – I believe all of the mirror traders are trading with stop losses, and it is set up differently. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. But you are able to close out a trade at any given time. Yes. This will be recorded and it will take about, I'd say, give it a day and I will make sure I put it in the Telegram so that you will have access to it. Okay? Because uh, it can take a little while. So now, <clears throat> make sure you write this part down. Buy up, stop down. All right? And sell down, stop up. That's going to help you. All right? Make sure you know that when you are buying, buys go up. So that means you need to have your stop loss below, right? So if like, let's say I was right here, buys go up. So my stop loss should be down. All right. That's what, here's an example. Buys are going up. See, that's why the green line is pointing up. So stop loss should be down. That's basically what you, you got to understand that. If I wanted to place a sell, this is what it's looking like when you actually place a trade on your phone or on your computer. You are buying here. Your stop loss is there. That means in the event that the market does not go down and it decides to do something stupid, like go up instead, uh, then it will take you out of the trade and you will not lose money. That's right. Defend, protect the opposite end. Yes. Yes, exactly. Protect the opposite end always. Okay. So that's basically what you need to know. Now, how do you actually calculate that? The harmonic scanner will tell you how to do it. Um, I know swipe trades, they tell you how to do it, but when you go on it, go at it on your own, sometimes they will say, Hey, especially if you're on the sessions, the London sessions and New York sessions, a lot of times they'll say, Hey, go ahead and enter now, adjust, you know, use your own risk. So what they're telling you is figure out your own stop loss. <laughs> so how would you do that? Um, the way you would do that is basically, okay, let's say I was putting in a cell. All right. And I wanted, I wanted my stop loss to be 50 pips from where I entered. So let's say this right here is my stop loss. I wanted it to be 50 pips from my enter. This green is my entry point. So guys, I want you to calculate what would my stop loss be if I wanted it 50 pips from my entry point on a sell. So remember, sell is going down, stops go up. Okay. So now when we, I'll just say this. While you guys were calculating, you know, oh, I went here and I exited there. I got this many pips. It's going to be the same thing going the other way, though. It's the opposite. So if I entered at 103.76 and I said, give me a 50 pip stop risk. If I said do that, I want you guys to do that for me. Go on and calculate it now. Calculate it now. 103.76, give me a 50 pip stop loss. Yes, it is a, it is a must to say, yeah, it is a must. So it's no problem, it makes sense to you very quickly as long as you stay engaged and watch training. Yes, it will. <laughs> All right, I'm seeing the numbers coming in. All right, let me go on. I want some more numbers. I want some more numbers. Give me some more. You got it. All right, some of y'all don't just be typing it. <laughs> so let's see here. 103, right, 0.76. Let's do it. Seven, six. All right. So if I was saying I want a 50 pip stop, remember, you're just adding 0.5. That's 50 pips, right? Because that means 50 pips. Um, so you're adding that and you should end up getting the 104.26. So you decide how much you are going to lose. And then you make that your stop loss. That's basically what the stop loss is. Guys, anytime I take a trade, I always know how much I'm losing all the time. 
I do not go into things gambling. I am not a gambler. Me and my husband, we went to Vegas, and do you know, we didn't gamble at all. We just don't like to. The hotel we stayed at gave us $20. As soon as that 20 bucks ran out, I did not put no more money in because I like to keep my money. That's me. Um, so <laughs> let me show you guys a risk management calculator real quick because I tell you, I'm always in control of what I lose, and you need to be too if you want to take this seriously. If you are a student, and you want to take this seriously, you have to know what you're losing. Because that's the only thing you can control in this market. All right, so let's do this real quick. All right, so you go to my, uh, excuse me, position, position, sorry, <laughs> size calculator. Sometimes when you talk and, you know, after a while, things don't start, to, they start to not look like they're spelled correctly to you. Uh, I do this all the time in my class. Okay, so. Let's say right here, this is my, this, everybody needs to make themselves very familiar with a position size calculator, okay? This right here is going to keep it real with you. It will keep you in the game, okay? Um, so you set your account amount. So let's say you have 3,000, okay? We can even say you have 500, whatever. It doesn't matter. And you figure out your risk to reward or your risk ratio, Everybody, no one should trade over 5% of their account. Make sure you write that down. Do not go over 5%. Five is highly risky. So I like to go around 3%, all right? Now, if I said, hey, remember I just told you guys, a 50 pip loss, 50 pip stop. So how much money am I agreeing to give away to the market if it doesn't go well? I'm gonna find out right now. 50 bucks, okay? Out of the $500, $15 is what I'm losing. That's okay. I'm all right with that. So this also tells you something, and we'll get back to this. Uh, it also tells you what you need to be trading, what size you need to be trading at in order to make this a reality. But you have to know what you're, um, what you're in control. You're only in control of what you lose. And that's very powerful when you know how to use it the right way, okay? Does everybody kind of understand how you set your stop loss? So it says, so you could calculate... So could you just calculate your stop loss according to the amount of money you are comfortable losing without actually calculating what is equivalent to 3%? So say you said $5 is okay and your lot size is 0.02. Then you know you can risk 25 pips. Yeah, you can work backwards. You, you sure can work backwards in that way. That works good. I like to use the calculator because it tells me what my lot size should be. And because you're using this right here, like you, you already know that you're trading 20 cents. So you, that's, you know how many pips you can lose. So yes, you can work backwards. That's good. Okay. So for now, let's move on to the lot sizes. And please, anybody stop me if you're confused. What is a lot? It is basically a bundle. This is a lot right here. We're talking not like a lot, but you know, this is an actual lot size. So right here, this water means, you know, you don't get to just get one out. You got to buy the whole package. It's the same in Forex. Back in the day when you had to come with like hundreds of thousands of dollars just to be able to trade, now they let you leverage. They let you use a certain amount. Like you can trade a lot. You can get a standard lot, which is 1,000 units, which means you're buying 100,000 units of a country's currency for very cheap. That's what you're doing. Okay, and you're selling, you're able to make bigger profits. It's kind of like when you buy a house, um, you, you, you don't have to come here in America, at least, you don't have to come with the full blown 200,000, you can just come with 20%. All right, and that's kind of what this is all about. All right, so now this is something that you probably want to pay attention to right over here the dollar per pip. When I talk about pips, being excited about pips. Uh, depending what you're trading is going to make you very excited. Okay. Um, and then this is your volume size. Very, look, this is what you are using in your MetaTrader 4 on your computer or on your phone. When you are entering in your lot size, that is what they're talking about. This right here. Some people go nuts and they enter in like a 1.0. You are actually trading $10 per pip, which means you can make it, you make $10 per pip or lose $10 per pip. And a lot of people get in and they try to make fast money. And you know, there's a saying for that, easy come, easy go. So I'm glad. I'm so glad this training is so good. I'm so glad. <laughs> so right here, it says volume, 0.02, all right, 0.03. This right here, 3.0. Does anybody know how many pips that 3.0 is? Type in the chat. If you do, if you do a match, you are balling, or you should be. Mm -hmm. That's right. $30 per pip. 
So let's, let's go back to my little risk management calculator real quick, okay? This is where people go nuts. They, they trade too small. So this right here, 0.03, is actually 30 cents per pip. All right, so now people are like, huh, whoop de do 30 cents per pip, yay. You know, that's actually good money. Considering whatever you're trading, if you left that in the bank, you only get 1% a year? Are you kidding me? And you don't even get 1%. Don't let you have like some kind of monthly maintenance fee that cleans you out, you know, so you actually lost more than you gained, all right? So yeah, 30 cents per pip is exciting, okay? Now, if you, let's, like a lot of people, they come in, they fund their accounts with $500, $100, and then they wanna trade the almighty standard lot, which is $10 per pip. Let me show you how much of your account you would actually have to risk when you do that. So let's see if it's 50% of your account. Nope, not even at 50%. Let's try 90%. I guess, it, no, actually, I can tell. You have to be like 100%. Okay, hold on, let me turn this down. All right, so look at that. You would have to risk your entire account at $500 with a 50 pip stop loss. You would have to risk your whole account to be able to trade $10 per pip. And so if that means if this thing goes the other way, you will have lost all 500 of your dollars. Is that smart? No, don't do that, okay? That's not smart. So that's basically what I wanted to share with you guys about this risk management calculator. Remember, we don't want to risk nothing more than 5%. And your, your, what you can trade, your lot size, see that? This is 50 cents per pip. It actually changes depending on your stop loss. So if you have a smaller to stop loss, like 25 pips, then what you can trade at is bigger. So that means now you're trading at a dollar per pip, all right? So if you wanna trade bigger, you either add more money, huh, $5,000? You either add more money, now you're at a standard lot, or you have a smaller stop loss. That's basically how that goes, okay? Otherwise, you can just do it blind and just say, hey, I just wanna trade at $30 per pip. And the moment you press buy, your whole count goes bye-bye. That's what happens, all right? I don't know if that's happened to anybody. Okay, so hopefully that's making sense. Ask questions if you have it. So now we have gotten to the point, you understand stop losses, and we've talked about risk management. So let's talk about um, your phones, Metatrader 4, real quick, how do you set it up, all right? So it says here, the main screen, click plus to add more pairs. So here it is. When you get to your Metatrader 4, make sure you guys open this up. When you get here, you hit the plus sign, and that will take you to, um, excuse me, sorry. That will, add, that will allow you to add a pair. So there's times where like, hey, somebody's calling out a pair, swipe trade saying, hey, NZD USD. Notice NZD USD is not here. Notice that? Well, what do you do? You add it to your screen. How? You just go to this little plus sign, and then you click it. IML Train Guys actually has all of this amazingly put together in an ebook that tells you how you use your MetaTrader 4. So I do advise you guys to use IML Train. It was put together for all of us. So use it. Go through it in detail. Make sure you go through it. It's great. All right. Um, now, if you want to take a trade, what do you do? You press and hold. Take your finger and stick it on one of those things. Press and hold. And then you will get this thing called a new order or a trade, depending on what type of phone model you have. So either you're gonna get a new order or you're gonna get a trade, okay? Once you do that, you hit trade. It's gonna take you to the trading window, okay? So remember those lot sizes that I was just talking about? All of that right there. Be very careful what you, what you set your thing up to because it will stay there. So there's been times where in one trade, I wanted to trade you know, $5 per pip. Another one I might wanna trade 80 cents per pip. But if you're not paying attention, you just get trigger happy and you hit sell without looking, you might be accidentally trading more than you wanted or less than what you wanted. So make sure everything is good before you hit buy or sell. This is the stop loss um, for, the, for the Androids and this is the take profit, all right? It's very obvious for this right here. So it says, my wife just asked me, honey, are you learning the pip? I just told her, I am a student, yeah! <laughs> That's right, exactly. You tell her, I am a student. Are you making money yet? I am a student. I'm a student, knowledge is power. What, we, what, we, what did we learn? So how do you decrease it? You can either type it in. You can like just click here and type it in, or you can hit these little buttons on the side. Like those are actually ways that you can increase or decrease it, okay? Okay, 
So right here, uh, yeah, I just talked about the lot sizes. So yes, you can increase or decrease. Just make sure you check it out, all right? Um, and then, so yeah, this was like a little review. There are different types of orders. Market execution is usually on an iPhone, instant execution on other phones. So instant execution and market execution are the same thing. That just basically means that you are bam in the market right there. Boom in it. So that means, Hey, I want to get in. Boom. I'm right in. Now there's other ones called pending limit or pending um, orders. Google these. Okay. It says, can you enter one? Yes. You can only enter one take profit at a time. You can, as your trade is progressing, you can monitor it and you can go back and modify. And I'll show you how you do that because there's a lot of trades you guys have noticed where it says take profit one, take profit two. You can modify it as it's going. Okay. So buy limit, sell limit, buy stop, sell stop. I won't go into major detail. What I will say is these right here are nice if you don't want to sit there and watch and wait for it to happen, you know, but you know, it's going to happen at a given time. Again, IML Train, they actually go over this in great detail. IML Academy talks about the types of buy orders and when to use them and how to use them. So check them out, all right? Um, and then right here, Euro USD. So now we are actually in our, we're actually in a transaction. So this is our transaction window. The red is not really our friend right away, but you gotta know that it's gonna get red immediately because you have to pay your broker the spread. The spread is basically the difference from the buy and like what you're buying and what you're trading with, okay? You don't actually give a percentage of your commissions, you just pay the spread, all right? Now, I wanna tell you guys this. When you place a trade, guys, and you've put your take profit and you've put your stop loss in, I need you to do yourself a favor. Walk away from your phone. Do not stare at it 24 hours a day because then you're gonna feel like, oh God, it's going down, oh God, it's going down. And then what are you gonna do? You're gonna get out. And then what happens? It goes up. Or, oh my gosh, look at that, it's going up, it's going up. Let me just get out of it now while I still got profit. And then, you know, it goes up even further. Do not mess with your trade. If you set a take profit and a, um, what's that other one, stop loss, Leave it alone, monitor it, give yourself a break. Say every four hours, I will check on this. Every X amount of hours, I will check on it, okay? Maybe depending, that will help you mentally. I call it babysitting. Don't babysit your trade, all right? Even like it gets me, if I sit there and I watch it, there's something about this red, like maybe they should have put like an aquamarine or something. Maybe that might've made you feel a lot better than seeing that screaming red. Screaming red, yes. <laughs> like it should have been like an aquamarine or like a lavender or something like that. Maybe I would have felt more calmer about losing my money. I don't know. The red is just, it hurts. Okay, but anyhow, blue, good sign. That's sign the plot profit. How do you get to this little window right here? <laughs> um, again, I'm gonna let you guys check that out. If you go to IML Academy, it talks about it. Also, you can go online and Google sell limit, sell stop. There are great videos that talk about that. Um, IML train also talks about it. I, the only reason why I won't do, yeah, like an overdraw, exactly. Yeah, okay. So when, if you press hold and hold on one of your trades, so once you get here, boom, you press and you hold that thing, then this window pops up. You can close it, you can modify it, or you can add a whole nother trade. That's what you can do. Okay, it says, yes, I jump out when that red is talking. Yes, the red is very loud, screaming loud. Something about blue makes you happy though. All right, I think they do that on purpose, guys. I'm sure there's some psychology behind that, those colors. You know they are. All right, so right here, um, you, when you go in and you modify, the only thing you can do is you can, you can actually start to take little pieces of your trade out. You cannot adjust your lot size. You can change your stop loss and your take profit in the modify window. Also, make sure whatever trade you're taking, you are on the right pair. Because there's times where I've jumped around and I'm like, I'm in the NZD USD and then I go to place another buy and I, I mean to buy Euro USD, but I'm still in NZD USD. So make sure you check everything. This right up here. Make sure you check your lot size. Make sure you check it all. Okay. All right. So this is what it looks like to take a signal. If you're in a, if you're in one of the signal trading, um, you know, telegrams, this is what it looks like. You can screenshot this if you like. All right, so see that Euro USD, but look, it says Euro CAD. So you would have to make sure you change that. You can actually click here and change it. 
or you can go back and change it back, back to the main screen. All right. So your stop loss and your take profits. Notice you can only put one in at a time. You can change them. You can do two trades at the same time. And that's called twin trading. Do two of the exact same trades and have one set to take profit one and one set to take profit two. You can do it that way. And then you can close one out, you know? So there's, there's so many different ways that you can do it, guys. All right. Um, swipe trades. Amazing. Guys, this thing is about to be $15 on the 15th. Hey, imagine that. Now, I will say, anybody who's feeling kind of some type of way about it being $15, it was nice of them to pilot it and let us know how amazing it is. Guys, within the first week, you will have paid that money back in what you are gaining. On top of it, this is the best, uh, outside of the scanner, this is the best tool for a brand new individual. We are all students, but guys, we all can take a swipe trade and make some money while we learn, right? Earn and learn. Okay, so this is what swipe trades looks like. It's something that's amazing, and I, I totally urge you guys to make sure anybody you bring in new that they get these swipe trades. Here is the harmonic scanner. It's the same deal. You got your stop here, entry there. Um, you take profit one, take profit two. All right. It changes. So it says, I still have to figure out how to download the harmonic scanner to my Mac. There are videos for that. Um, I have to look it up. I'll, I'll look it up and put it in the telegram. Okay. If you're in the telegram, twin trade sounds sexy. <laughs> Ah, yes. <laughs> it's very sexy if you're winning too. Anyhow, so, and then Chris Terry has daily swing trades. So make sure you check out, take a look. He does them daily. Lots of times he does them weekly. These swing trades are longer and they can take like a week. You got to have patience for these ones, but you're like looking at winning like 400 to 600 pips at a time with these trades. Okay. So check those out. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to, um, open it. Like before I do that, let me go to IML or excuse me, iMarkets live harmonic scanner. Let's see if we've got anything actually popping off right now. So I mark was, there it is. Oh my gosh. My dog has to go outside. I have to call my husband. <laughs> She's letting me know. Sorry animals they're just like kids okay so let me add or sign in those of you who like if you're trying to download it you understand that you can totally look it up right here on the computer just by going to where i just went to oh my hold on a second okay so he says Jesus, you know i'm a student so please take the will <laughs> yes i will remember i'm glad let that be your anthem, guys. I am a student. Give yourself permission to learn. Don't feel like you have to, to have this huge story. You guys have uplines. People are making money. Like, use their stories until you learn and have your own story. The fact that you're learning is a story. Okay, so let's talk about this. Hold on. I'm sorry, guys. I'm letting my dog out. Um, all right, so let's look. This one right here, Euro NZD. I've been watching this one. Uh, oh, shoot. On. This one right here is, is approaching upward. It's already at the entry spot. You guys see that? Let's, let's actually look at this. Okay, so you have the entry spot right here. That's the stop loss. Here's a take profit, take profit to all that. So, I mean, this one you could get in. There are signs that you would probably want to look at before you, before you jump in. I'm going to I'm gonna go look at another one, see if there's other ones. But this one right here is ready. Right here it says scan for M15, and then it's got the H1, H4, and D1. Um, the harmonic scanner, guys, is the most accurate for sure on these ones right here. The H1, H4, and D1. They they back tested it, um, 30,000 different charts. This is what Chris Terry said. They back tested it, and they found that these ones happen to be the most. Um, one, these harmonic patterns, like when I say harmonic patterns, I'm not talking about music. These are actual patterns and these happen to be the highest, um, what's the word? Uh, I'm trying to get it. Basically the, the higher probability patterns. That's basically what it is. Okay. Um, the bat, the shark, the butterfly, the Gartley, those are all, these are all different pattern names. So let's look at what this one is saying on the hour. Okay. We're still here. This is the same one, NZD. So let's let's look at the NZD USD. This is the butterfly. All right. So now you guys see this thing has gone past right here. 
and then it's going, it wants to go up. So somebody asked, what is a stop? What is a sell limit? I can tell you that right now. I think it was Ty asked, what's the, what's the difference between a limit and a stop? Basically, a limit means that the market has to go down first and then turn around and go up. A stop means that it's kind of like running through a red light, you know, or running through a stop sign. The moment you run past it, who's coming after you? The police. <laughs> um, and that's the same thing. Oh, sorry. Sorry, guys. Letting my dog out. How do you know the direction it is going? Good question, Latasha. When you look here at this scanner, see this D right here? Notice it says take private one, two, and three. So right now it went down. What do you think it's expecting? We're expecting it to do. We're expecting it to go in what direction? We're expecting it to go in what direction? What does this look like, guys? Yes, you got it. Up. Like you can, you know this by looking at the take profits. Which direction are the take profits? They're up. First thing that you want to see is one, this bad boy is already down. It's like it's gone past the entry a little bit, and now here is our stop loss. So that's good. Um, hopefully, it's going to turn around and go back in this direction. That's basically what this pattern is saying. All right, so you can actually get into this trade. I'm gonna look again, I'm gonna just look around just to see what other trades there are, but there's a lot of them that are ready. The Euro USD, let's see what's going on. Ooh, the Euro USD, look at that. Look at that one, guys. This one's already in progress. So if anybody took this one earlier today, uh, cause all of this movement happened today. So anybody else, if anybody got on the Euro USD, is there, was there anybody that took this trade? Uh oh, somebody's drawing again. If, let me know in the chat. Did anybody take this trade, Euro USD, on the harmonic scanner earlier today? Because if you did, you would be in some nice profit. Okay, Ty, you took it. Are y'all in profit? You should be. If you took it earlier today, give me some yeses with explanation points if you're in profit. You can see it came down, and then boom, up it went. Okay, so close out, close an hour later with profit. Good, good. Okay, well, see, look. Entry point, and that it already hit the first take profit. A lot of times the market does these little pullbacks. So it goes up, goes down, and then it goes up some more, and then it comes down. So like you can actually see that. It goes up, down, up, down. That's what the market does. Okay. <laughs> so good. So that, now I'm glad that you was able to close with profit. All right. So yes, it goes up and down. So this one is still on in progress. And no, I wouldn't jump in on this one. So right now it's that the take profit one, it hit your take profit. So if you set this thing up where you entered at this and then you set that take profit in, then you would have made some profit. Let's see how much profit that was. Let me see. Okay, that was a nice 71 pips, guys. How do you know they, how, how, but how do they determine if it's a butterfly? That's just the, um, the type of pattern it is. There's different types of algorithms. There's different types of patterns that they do to know that. Um, using Fibonacci, it gets kind of confusing and very advanced. But basically, looking at Fibonacci levels, um, there's a certain criteria that has to meet in order to be considered a butterfly, which, a very, which is a very high probability trait. So that's basically what it is that they're doing. And now you've got a scanner that is a robot that does that for you. All right, so I think it... I think I get it. So if you want, you can modify. Yes, yes. You can modify to take profit one, or like I said, you can, a lot of people like to twin trade where they have two trades open at the same time. Uh, Chris Derrick has a video in IML Academy talking about twin trading. All right. I advise you look at it. So you can do that. So you can have one doing, you know, take profit one and then another going to take profit two, or you can have them both going and then close one out and let the other one head up to take profit two. It's all up to you. It's up to you. Okay. So that's another way. So there are several of them. Yeah. I got to get this thing downloaded. Otherwise, until then you can go to IML Harmonic Scanner. Um, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to, I'm going to open it up for questions and let everybody go just because I want to keep you any longer. But yes, you guys get it right here. NZD, USD. I, let me see what this GBP CAD is talking about. Okay. This one has also already gone in progress. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. I don't know if anybody took this one. Uh, this one also took, like, yeah, this one I think happened sometime last night. And between yesterday and today, it hit the take profit. And then it retraced, and it could be on its way to take profit too. 
So yeah, check that out. If you entered in, it hit your entry point and it hit the take profit. So that was some more money. Yes, I train every Wednesday. Okay, so right there, oh guys, that was like 100 pips. If you was in there, you would have got yourself 100 pips. Ugh. Okay, so if you are wanting to take a trade, if you wanna try it out, I totally advise you put this in your demo until you become very comfortable. Put it in your demo. This one is ready to go. How do you know when it's ready to go? Um, there's several ways that you can go about doing this. You can do one of two things. You can enter a sell stop. This is NZD, uh, Euro, or yeah, Euro NZD. How about we do, yeah, we can do Euro NZD. Um, so look at here. Actually, guys, I'm sorry. I think I want to do NZD USD. You guys can do what you, whichever one you want. I just like that this one kind of went a little bit past the entry point. How do you know? Sometimes it goes past your entry point and then it turns around and goes the other way. What you can do to make it safer is you can set a buy stop, all right? A buy stop basically means, and I'm gonna just put this little line here. A buy stop, I'm gonna do a nice purple line. I'll make it really big and dotted so you can see it. Oh, dang, there it goes. All right, so what that means is if you set your stop, right, or not a stop, if you put it in there, that means the market would have to go down. It's gonna turn around. The moment it passes this line, then you are in the trade. That's what you can do. So you can put this in your demo. Yes, put the harmonic scanner in your demo. <laughs> you can put this in your demo. So try this out, all right? So if you guys wanna do this now, this is your stop loss. So enter all of those things in. Your entry can either, you can either enter, you know, have your entry be like this number right here, or you can have it even be a little bit above the entry line. It's, it's totally up to you. But right now, because it's already below the market, the moment it passes and goes this direction, it will, you know, it will automatically enter you in. Otherwise, some people like to do um, what are those market executions where they're automatically entered. Let me tell you right now how many pips you are at away from your stop loss. This is a very small risk. This is like 16, 20 pip risk. So remember, if it doesn't go well, okay, you're not gonna lose very much money, guys, if you're using proper risk management. So try it out. You can do, you can do either one of these, NZD, USD, they're both ready. NZD, USD, or Euro, NZD. Either one of them are good and ready to go. So uh, I can go back to one. You can do a buy stop on NZD, USD, or you can enter in right now. Same with, um this one oh guys -wee. euro nzd that's a hundred pips right there that's a possible 100 pips Ooh, that was nice so either one i'll just this is what i'll do for you guys i'm gonna do them both in my demo um and i'm going to go ahead and i'll leave this up for both of you right here you could do an instant execution on this one let me type that in you can do instant market execution or Okay, you can do an instant execution on this one or a market execution on this one, all right? So I'll leave this one up for a couple minutes. And while I leave it up, I'm gonna open it up for you guys to ask your questions, okay? Everyone else is dismissed. I'm gonna give you about two minutes for this one and then I will go back to NZD USD. Otherwise, you are also free to go on your IO Mail Harmonic Scanner and check it out yourself, okay? All right, the rest of y'all are free to go. It was nice talking to you guys. I'll